Disney doubles down on Woke, and Captain Hook takes the consequences. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another declaration of truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlburt. Late Sunday night, November 20th, the Walt Disney Company announced that the old boss would replace the new boss. This is happening less than a year after Mr. Robert Chapek took over the company. In point of fact, Robert A. Iger, his predecessor, made Disney the woke entertainment company it has become, and he will now lead Disney moving forward. And with this announcement, the last attempt to save a traditional entertainment firm has now failed. Nothing remains but for the parallel marketplace to find and build its own entertainment, literally. And for the rest of us to take down some special privileges that that firm enjoys in our laws. Before I deliver the final fiduciary diagnosis, that's a paraphrase of a term I borrowed from my medical experience, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views, link in the description. And be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there, especially this t-shirt that I have chosen for today, which shows the name Mickey, as in mouse, drawn in Walt Disney's inimitable printing style, and its apparent reflection in a pool of water, which reflection reads, Wicked, because that's what Disney has become. One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can also uh, click the bell icon to get a notice every time I come out with a new one. In fact, do you see the new icon, heart shape with the U.S. dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click on that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do, so long as it's legal tender. Now, reportage from the Disney announcement comes from Just the News, BizBack Review, The Daily Mail, and Daily Headlines. Disney had fallen over a billion dollars short of its earnings guidance for the third quarter of 2022. Only last week, CEO Bob Chapek announced massive layoffs. Variety, The Daily Caller, and American Wire News tweeted about these layoffs. I have links in the description to one tweet each from these organs, all with photos or other graphics, and all linking to articles saying much the same thing, that Bob Chapek announced massive layoffs and a hiring freeze because the company was hemorrhaging money. Now, American Wire News also tweeted about one possible reason for the earnings shortfall the movies and TV shows Disney is now promoting. Here we see a preview of a children's cartoon show blatantly suggesting that gender is fluid and that hormonal and surgical sexual reassignment of young children is entirely appropriate. I have a link in the description, but I warn you, that video depicts something that might be a bit much for younger children. Parental judgment and discretion are advised. But the Daily Mail clearly shows that Bob Iger put in place many of the woke projects that blew up when Chapek was nominally in charge. Too many influencers to count have pointedly blamed Iger for setting Disney down this path. They also accuse him of setting time bombs to blow up during Chapek's tenure. <coughs> Bob Iger clearly planned to discredit Chapek even as he recommended Chapek to succeed him. And now that discrediting is complete. Now, the problems with woke entertainment do not stop with Disney. Without exception, all the great American motion picture and television companies have taken, have gone down this same path. Everyone should recognize the old line company's names. Radio Keith Orpheum, or RKO, Universal, 20th Century Fox, Paramount, and Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. They, and Disney, at first produced movies and later TV shows that people wanted to watch and could enjoy. Though RKO folded in 1959, the rest kept going. 
following this same maxim, the viewer is always right. No longer. Perhaps the dissolution of the Production Code Administration or the Hayes Office opened the door for the sea change. Or perhaps the survivors of the Hollywood blacklist sought an awesome revenge on the American people. For, as they saw it, sacrificing crea their creative freedom to safety from the communist ideology that these same creators and actors and so on love to promote. So they began to introduce into their projects themes questioning basic ethical values and economic principles. But, <laughs> but they could go only so far without having people refuse to patronize them. So art houses sprang up, carrying experimental productions that threw to the winds not only morality, but basic principles of the writer's craft. Today, the entire motion picture and television distribution space is one big art house. Family friendship is obsolete to them because the idea of family is itself obsolete. Anyone who doesn't appreciate the content these companies are now producing, they dismiss as bigoted, ignorant, hateful. You name the name, they call the name. Then when people don't show up, the creatives blame the public and continue to cater exclusively to the art house. Of the ruination of franchises like Star Wars from Lucasfilm and bad spin-off projects like Lightyear from Pixar, the less said the better. In fact, Conservative News and Views has many articles of the rot that pervades the Disney company, going far beyond Lucasfilm and Pixar. For instance, Sheriff Grady Judd of Polk County, Florida has twice run sting operations against, uh, uh, what are we supposed to call such people these days? Oh yes, minor attracted persons. Yes, Sheriff Grady Judd ran sting operations to catch active minor attracted persons in his county. The most recent, Operation Fall Hall II, concluded last September. Sheriff Judd hauled in quite the rogues gallery including school, faculty, and staff, retired and relocated judges, and Disney staff. Now, nothing could better illustrate the rot, the rot that Disney has sunk to than these arrests that Sheriff Judd has made. But consider the not-so-secret gay agenda about which one Disney producer boasted. Next, consider Disney's direct opposition to the Parental Rights and Education Bill by Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida. Disney's communications director had to resign over that. This year, Florida has revoked the Reedy Creek Improvement District that essentially made Walt Disney World an independent city-state. In response, the governor of Colorado offered Disney a similar improvement district in that state. Meanwhile, the Disney board has told shareholders, in effect, that they'll sue Florida for breach of contract. Bear in mind that Disney is not a family-owned enterprise, and it hasn't been almost since Roy E. Disney, Walt's nephew, stopped running the place. I'm going to get into who owns Disney, so you'll understand how a company founded on family friendship could stoop and sink so low. But before I do, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You are not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the past few years. Now, collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Now, whether you just want to... Uh, the collect gold, rare and unique coins, or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides. Either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com. Learn how you can build a legacy for your future. Now, back to Disney and who owns it. Well, 
Bob Iger owns a large chunk of stock himself, and that gave him a big vote. But he doesn't exactly hold a majority share. But look at the other big investors. They include Vanguard Group and BlackRock. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Those two firms constitute, or at least form a large part of, what I call the American Economic Forum, in contrast, or comparison rather, to the World Economic Forum, the one, that, the one in Davos, Switzerland. In short, the deep state owns Disney now, and it has for decades. That is how Bob Iger could outmaneuver Bob Chapek and say, with a straight face, that getting woke does not mean going broke. He had a tame board to work with. Or rather, he is the current fair-haired boy for the Vanguard BlackRock Alliance. And now that he's back, you can expect him to tell Kathleen Kennedy at Lucasfilm, for example, that she's not going anywhere. Instead, Jean Fabreau and Dave Filoni, her two bitterest and most inveterate opponents, will have to leave. And, as she promised, the Force will indeed be female. Nor will that even be the half of it. The latest release in the Marvel Comics universe, which the House of Mouse also controls, continues this Amazonian theme. Fans of the franchise now dismiss it as the MCU, and they have for years. So, paraphrase Jack Nicholson, as Colonel Nathan Jessup, USMC, and a few good men, I'm absolutely sure that a bunch of you are wondering, what are we going to do about this? Well, the only thing Americans can do is take their business elsewhere. Disney is the largest combination entertainment producer and distributor and theme park operator, but it is not the only one. More to the point, the parallel marketplace has room for alternative entertainment producers. Daily Wire Productions is one, and ironically, they scored a grand coup by hiring actress Gina Carano away from Disney. Kathleen Kennedy made that job ridiculously easy by firing Carano over some Twitter rule-like violation or other. Carano had been talking about returning to Lucasfilm with Mess when Messrs. Favreau and Filoni running the place, but that was before the return of Iger. Now you have to figure that that deal is off, which means Gina will go back to Daily Wire and stay there. And we can expect more projects from Daily Wire, of which she will be producer, director, and star. Keep your eye on her. She's going places. Besides Daily Wire, we see Sherwood Pictures in Albany, Georgia. That company is literally a Baptist church that organized itself into a motion picture production company to produce explicitly Christian films. You know their names. Flywheel, Fireproof, Courageous, Facing the Giants, and War Room. I've seen them all, and they are five of the finest uh, films treating their respective subjects you are likely ever to see. And there's more to come. Neither of these names are as big as Disney, but they already exist and offer an obvious alternative, and other companies can form just as easily as they did. Now, they're going places. The only place Disney is going is down. Monopoly lasts only as long as its customers see no reason to look elsewhere. Iger gave people a reason during his entire tenure, and now the company he led has doubled down on it by bringing him back to make more woke mischief. Nor is this all the American people can now do to an out-of-favor Disney. Besides revoking the Reedy Creek Improvement District, I say it's time to return copyright to a 14-year, once-renewable term. 95, 95 years plus lifetime of the creator for human-created art and literature? That's ridiculous. And I, say that, and I say that as a creator. I was perfectly content with the old once-renewable copyright system. But you know what really bugs me? Disney and Paramount can hide behind this law to ruin their respective franchises with complete impunity. This includes Star Wars and Marvel for Disney and Star Trek for Paramount. Under current law, no one will be able to refresh either franchise until 2072 and 2061. 
for Star Wars and Star Trek, respectively. And by then, everybody will have forgotten them. But take copyright back to a 14-year once renewable term with a maximum of 28 years, and someone can act now. Now, lawyers might call this a taking a private public uh, property for public use requiring just compensation, but given the ruin of these franchises, just compensation, this might be a token amount. Congress passed the Copyright Act of 1973 as amended for one reason only, as a favor to Disney. But an implied contract existed for the company produce entertainment people appreciated. If they will now shove woke ideology down their patrons' throats, they deserve every sanction against them that the Constitution allows. Let the sanctions begin with revocation of the private laws, the privileges from which they have benefited, and let the parallel marketplace add popular entertainment to its offerings. Link in the description of the article to the three tweets talking about layoffs to Disney, to the tweet with the questionable TV preview, to my Declarations of Truth uh, Twitter account, and to Conservative News and Views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to OurSilverLines.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. And on the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel and links to a new playlist of videos I've done done before about Disney, and one video each from Influencers Overlord DVD and Midnight's Edge, talking about what just happened late Sunday night at Disney. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.